Hi, in this video we will talk about how to fit models in our image. Imagine that you work in a lab or a factory and your vision system needs to find a specific shape that you know. A cell, a bolt, an automotive part. It doesn't matter as long as you know the shape of the thing. In this case, the Hulk transform is an alternative to find specific shapes on images. So let's start by the simplest shape, the straight line. So in our image, we can have several points that resulted of our edge detection algorithm, and we want to find the straight line that some of these points represent. We know the line formula, y equals to mx plus c. So we can rewrite this formula like this. We are just moving the slope to the other side of the equation, and now we can visualize information in two different spaces. The first one is the image space with coordinates x, y, and the second one the parameter space, in which one axis is the slope and the other is the intercept. This transformation is convenient because one point in one space will represent a line in the other, and vice versa. For example, a point MC in the parameter space represents a line in the image space. And it's clear because we know the values of the slope and the intercept. Now, for a given point XY in the image space, we will see one line in the parameter space. This is because this line in the parameter space represent all the possible lines that cross the point x, y in the image space. So now, how do we find the one that we want? We take another point in the image and that point will create a new line in the parameter space. Remember that this new line represents all possible lines in the second point. But only one line is shared between the two points. Just to make it more explicit, let's take another point. This third point will create another line that intersects the other two in the same point MC. If we take a point that is not related, let's say this one, this point also will create a line, but that line won't intersect the other lines in the same point, because it's not part of the same line in the image space. Now we can follow the algorithm to find lines. Imagine that you have your points. So we are going to create a matrix full of zeros that we will call the accumulator matrix. This will be used to write the lines in the parameter space. So for each point x, y, we will plug the x and y values into the line equation. And we write the resulting line in the accumulator matrix. We basically add 1 to all the positions that correspond to the line. And then we go to the next point and we do the same. We add again, 1 to the positions of the new line, and we continue until finish. As you can see, the intersecting points in the accumulator will keep growing with each new point, while the rest of the cells of the matrix will be either zero or they will have a low value. So now, if we have something like this, we will find something like this in the accumulator and we will find four points with a significantly higher value compared to the rest on those four points that correspond to the four lines that we are looking for. However, in reality, the use of the line equation in this way represents a problem. m can go from minus infinite to infinite, so in practice, the line equation is better represented by the following form x sine of theta minus cosine of theta plus rho equals to zero. Here we know that theta is the angle of the line, and it can only range from zero to pi. 
and rho is the distance of the line to the origin. In the parameter space, what we will get is a sinusoidal, and when we plot the second point, we will get another one. The intersection of these two are the lines in the image space. Here you will find theta and theta plus pi. But both of these intersections correspond to the same line in the image space. Let's see an example. We have an image and we apply an edge detector. Then we binarize it and we apply the Hof transform. In the accumulator matrix, we will get something like this. Here we need to find the peaks. And those peaks represent the lines in the image. Peaks with higher value means that more points are part of the same line. So that's the reason why we take the higher values. If we take lower values in the accumulator, more lines will appear in other directions that not necessarily represent the main lines, but in the image, there are a set of points that are aligned. So the algorithm will find them. So now what happens if we want to find curves? Well, the process is similar. We can use the half transform to find any other shape. We just need to use the right equation and the procedure is exactly the same. So let's see an example for a circle. The circle is defined by points x, y and a radius r. And let's say that we are looking to find a specific type of cell in this image. And we know that that cell is round and we know its size. So we can include that in the equation. So now we have our image space and the parameter space. In the same way that it worked for the straight line, each point in the image space will create a circle in the parameter space. We transform every point in the image and we will find the point in which all the circles intercept. And that is the position of the circle we are looking for. If we want to find a bigger circle, then we just need to change the size of R in the equation. And this gets better. Imagine that you want to find circles regardless of their size. So you could include R in the parameter space. And this will create an extra dimension. We have A and B for the position of the circle and R for the radius. Then each point in the image space will create a cone in the parameter space. There will be several cones and you might find several intersections at different levels. But once that you get the peaks, you will get the circles with more points that fit each equation. Okay, in this video, we review the Hof transform and how we can use it to find specific shapes on a minimage. See you in the next video.